continuing the series of weekly contest to 91 here comes the last question of the contest total appeal of a string here in this question what do we need to do we need to identify the total appeal of a of all the substrings of a given string and how do you identify an appeal of a string it is equal to the number of distinct characters found in that string for example here there are three distinct characters a b and c therefore for this particular string the appeal turns out to be 3 we need to identify the total appeal of all the possible substrings of a given string and uh, here they have provided us with an example i hope you guys have already gone through this example without further ado let's quickly walk through the presentation where i'll be walking you through various examples to and also tell you the algorithm to go about it lead code double to six two total appeal of a string it's a hard level question on lead code and i also feel the same also we have already solved all the previous three questions of the contest if you have any doubt understanding those questions or this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general please feel free to ping on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded both the links are mentioned in the description below let's proceed ahead and let's take a slightly different example a slightly easier one so that you get a good hold of the concept we will be using dynamic programming technique to come up with the algorithm what I'm trying to do here is to identify the recurrence relation for our dynamic programming approach and I'll be using this example to derive that recurrence relation. The input string is A, B, C, D, B. So as you can see, B is duplicated over here at the fourth index. So let's hypothetically assume we, have, we are trying to identify the appeal for all these strings that are contained up till this D and the value would be, let's try and look at it the first substring would be a single d there is only one element in it and the appeal for it would be one then we let's combine cd together what would be the appeal for the cd it would be equal to two then we have bcd the appeal for this would be three uh, the appeal for abcd would be four and we have generated all possibilities for the string ending at d for d singular one it is one for cd it's two for bcd it's three for abcd it's four that means we have successfully identified the function value for the third index. Now comes the question, can we utilize this value to compute the appeal for all the strings ending at this particular B? The answer is yes. How? Let's walk through it. Now we are interested in identifying the appeal for all the substrings ending at this particular B. So let's generate those substrings up. The first one would be this singular B. The next one would be B D, D B followed by C D B then B C D B then A B C D B. So here I have listed those up and let's try and calculate the appeal for each one of them. So this is pretty straightforward. It would be equal to one. Then this one would be equal to two because there are two distinct numbers and I can represent this as one from here plus one. So one plus one. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is C D B and the appeal for this one would be equal to three and I can represent this as two plus one. So let's write two plus one. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is B C D B and here you see that B is getting duplicated, which is an interesting case. So the appeal for this particular string would be equal to three plus zero. It by zero because B is already present in my previous string, so it would not contribute. So we can derive this three directly from here. Let's proceed ahead. So this is a duplication. Let's ignore it. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is A B C D B, and what would be the appeal for this one? It would be equal to four plus zero. Why zero? Because you can see that. B is getting duplicated over here. So whatever appeal we can be derived for ABCD, we can directly utilize it for this particular case. Now comes an interesting case. How can we form the F4 value using F3 value? So let's try and do that. So if you carefully see, then these four values are directly coming from F3. So what we can write, we can directly write F of four happens to be equal to First thing is F3 plus there are a few more values and let's try to compute those up. So a new character is getting added. So directly it will contribute to one plus addition. So let's write one over here. Now comes the case. How can we contribute for these one, one and zero, zero values? 
it's really simple what do you need to add you need to identify where is b occurring previously in your string where is b occurring previously in your string it occurs at first index so what is the number of elements that contribute to in between the current occurrence and the previous occurrence what are those elements there are two such elements and exactly we will write this in the form of the equation it's really simple so uh, i'll go ahead and write the current index which i am at which is happens to be 4 in this case so let's write 4 minus the previous occurrence of b what is that index it is 1 minus 1 so this the equation becomes f of 3 plus 1 plus 4 minus the last occurrence of b minus 1 so this one and this one can get cancelled what is left it is left is f of 3 plus 4 minus the last occurrence of b so if i write this in mathematical format in terms of i what do i get i get f of i equals to f of i minus 1 plus i minus the last occurrence of this current character that you are witnessing so the last occurrence of last index of the current character c so uh, apologies for the poor handwriting the final equation turns out to be f of i is equal to f of i minus 1 plus i minus the last occurrence of last index of c so this is it if you are able to derive this equation in an interview you are done with the algo to conclude it further let's quickly walk through the coding section and we will compute these f of i values starting from the 0th index up till the 4th index sum those up together and this will give us the final result So let's go and check out the coding section. Here I have created the DP array of size n plus one, where n signifies the length of the input string, and plus one for uh, taking care of the corner cases. Then I go ahead and create the last index array, and then initialize to twenty six size because it contains lower case English characters. Then I go ahead and fill in with minus one values by default. I, I proceed ahead and create the answer variable. It is initialized to zero l. I iterate over my input string one by one i extract the current character and i have used the exactly same equation that i talked in the presentation so uh, here you see dp of i plus 1 is equal to dp of i plus the ith index the newly index that is being considered minus the last occurrence of the same character once you have computed this value you add it to your answer string also don't forget to update the last occurrence of the current character with i once you are done with this you simply return the answer variable so let's try this up accepted the time complexity of this approach is of order of n because you are iterating through the input string only once and uh, yes you have space complexity too because you are using a dp array of size n with this let's conclude today's session i hope you enjoyed all the four questions that i just solved today my name is anjali deja i'm working as a software developer for at adobe and i genuinely hope you thoroughly enjoyed all the four solution if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel with this let's sign off my name is anjali deja i'm working as a software developer for at adobe and i am your catalyst in this journey of yours towards your dream company with this happy weekend to all of you goodbye take care